with the uh, funding from uh, the LOOC program. So first of all, I would like to thank the LOOC program for funding my attendance to these workshops. Uh, I would like to first talk about the motivation for applying to the LOOC program. Then I will introduce uh, to the essential elements of TBL, team-based learning. And then I will comment uh, the activities of the five workshops I attended. There were five different workshops, each one lasting for around uh, three hours. So to give you... Uh, a bit of background of why I applied for uh, this uh, LOOC program. On March 2021, I applied for the TASTE program to buy two books on TBL. That's when I started becoming interested in TBL. And I implemented uh, what I call a pilot TBL module, adapted because at that time I didn't have much uh, uh, much idea on how to implement this methodology on my courses. So on December 2021, I decided to apply for additional funding to attend uh, a series of online workshops on the fundamentals of TBL. And from now on, from uh, 2022 uh, onwards, I plan to implement the TBL method methodology in my uh, syllabi. So my main motivation was uh, to understand uh, in brief, to understand uh, what do students do when they're working in groups? I guess many of us are uh, make our students work in groups, but at least in my case, I was concerned about uh, whether the students were doing good, how they were interacting. And I found that the TBL methodology could provide a framework to uh, systematize the teamwork and to assess uh, how students are progressing, progressing individually and in teams, and also how can they be accountable to their peers, to their teammates. <clears throat> so to introduce you to TBL, TBL is a particular type of team learning because uh, it heavily relies on small group interaction. It's also uh, a particular type of flipped learning because we usually take lecture time out of class time. And it's also a particular type of active learning because we expect the students to participate in class, to be active learners. And the instructor becomes a facilitator, a guide on the side rather than a sage on the stage. So uh, regarding the essential elements of uh, TBL, this is how a typical uh, major instructional unit, this is how they call their uh, typical TBL modules, this is how uh, each major instructional unit looks like. First, uh, students prepare for class by well going through materials, readings, video presentations, and then each uh, module each unit is divided into two main parts, what they call the readiness assurance process and the application of course concepts. In the readiness assurance process, the students first answer a test individually, and then they answer the same test in teams. After this individual and team test, we have a time for appeals and instructors' uh, feedback. This uh, first part usually lasts for uh, 45 to 75 minutes of time. So that would take around one of our classes, which lasts for uh, 90 minutes. I'm trying to translate this uh, theoretical uh, uh, framework to our uh, classes. Then the main, uh, goal of the second part is to uh, apply course concepts. So this uh, can take up to four hours of class time, but we can make it shorter according to what the uh, instructors told us on those workshops. So depending on how much content you want to cover, this part can last between one hour four and four hours. <clears throat> These are the contents covered in uh, these five workshops. 
There were five workshops, as you can see in here, each one lasting for three hours. So each uh, workshop reproduced a team-based instructional activity sequence. This was really interesting because uh, we were taking, I, I mean, me and the other people attending the workshops were taking the role of a student. So we were participating in all these activities. And all these workshops were held online. Uh, the instructors uh, were from the United States and most of the participants, there were around 50 participants, most of them were, uh, were in the United States, but uh, some of them were also in the UK and uh, Singapore, I was attending from Japan and some Asian countries. Also, I have to say that this uh, methodology seems to be particularly popular in the medical science field. So that's why many of the participants were from uh, universities and colleagues uh, in, the, in the medical field. But also, well, it can be adapted to other fields as well. So this is how each session uh, happened. So uh, three hours, we had a first, the first part reproduced the IRAT and the TIRAT. Uh, IRAT stands for Individual Readiness Assurance Test. That is the individual test. Then the TRAT, the Team Readiness Assurance Test, the same test in groups. And finally, the debriefing session. Then we have a break and we had the application activities. And this is a, uh, well, a more detailed explanations of uh, everything that happens in a TVL module. Okay, we have the pre-training that we have to prepare individually, the RAT, the readiness assurance test, and the 4S applications activities, which uh, takes most of training time. Uh, another interesting concept, uh, we were uh, introduced to was what they called backward designed or reverse syllabus outline. Uh, this is usually the way in which we design our uh, syllabi. We first prepare the materials uh, and we think, okay, what do we want our students to learn or to remember? Then the students come to class and we apply knowledge. We give them some application activities. And finally, the students can create their knowledge in a higher cognitive, cognitive level by uh, doing any kind of homework or assignment. <clears throat> so uh, we were introduced uh, to what they call the backward design, which means that we should start uh, designing our syllabi with the learning outcomes. First of all, they told us, uh, you should try to think okay, what do I want my students to be able to do after finishing each learning module? And we have to aim at the higher cognitive level of Bloom's taxonomy. I want my students to create something. I want my students to uh, make a protocol for something, et cetera, et cetera. The second step going uh, backward is to design the application exercises to develop these uh, specific abilities or learning outcomes. And the key to design these application exercises is that uh, they should comply with the four S's. It must be a significant problem, a specific problem, the same problem for all teams, and you have to simultaneously report the answer to all teams. The next step, going one uh, level down, is to prepare the RAT assurance process. You need to prepare a set of questions that prepare the students for these application exercises. And these questions should uh, uh, aim at the lower cognitive levels of Bloom's taxonomy. And finally, you should try to find the learning materials that can provide the scaffolding for this whole <clears throat> learning process. Uh, so, well, this is a chart uh, summarizing all the, uh, the different uh, learning 
goals depending on the different blooms of taxonomy level. Another interesting concept uh, was that uh, we can have convergent learning objectives. That is, students have to aim for a correct answer, which is one single answer. Or in the higher cognitive levels, we can have divergent uh, learning objectives. That is, the students need to create, organize, design something so they can freely create and can compare uh, their different pieces of creation. So <clears throat> let's visualize that with an example. They were giving us uh, this example of a 4S application activity. As I told you, many of these uh, uh, instructors come uh, from the medical uh, field. So many of the questions are related to uh, the medical field. So this is an example of what they think is not a good 4S uh, application activity. Uh, why is that? Because the uh, stem of the question of this application activity is uh, clearly pointing to a correct answer. Mm -hmm. So I'll give you a few seconds to uh, read this question related to well, uh, dopamine. And then they told us, uh, you can transform this application activity into a more complex activity, even though the, uh, there is a still a single answer. So if you read this uh, question, it's uh, related to the uh, well, effects of dopamine in our body. But the difference is that uh, here we are uh, asking the students to provide with the most credible instead of uh, asking the student to provide with a correct answer. So this is one example uh, they gave us on how to design uh, uh, good for uh, s application activities. And this is an example, a typical example of a divergent application activities. For example, uh, you have to read a paragraph and each team has to summarize the primary argument and then one member of each team will go to the blackboard and write the answer. And everyone can check the answers from all teams and then uh, we can have a debriefing session or a discussion. Uh, going one uh, level down, now we are going to the IRAT and the TRAT. Uh, we were introduced uh, to how to design MCQs, that is multiple choice questions that promote and measure critical thinking. The instructors were telling us that uh, MCQs have usually a bad reputation among instructors because it's uh, what, let's say, lazy instructors may resort to if they want to grade exams in a fast way. So they told us it's very important that you uh, create these questions that promote critical thinking, that require multilogical thinking, and a high level of discrimination to answer. Once again, I will uh, illustrate that with an example. This is one example, according to the instructors, of a bad MCQ. Mm -hmm. Why is that? If you read the stem of the question and you read the four options, I'll give you a few seconds. It's evident, imagine that I'm a student and I have uh, gone through the pre-reading materials before class. I can answer this question just by parroting or uh, just uh, recalling information from the textbook. Mm -hmm. One interesting thing of the IRAT is that uh, rather than choosing a one correct answer, the students should assign points. In this case, this example, the student has four points and can, if the student is completely sure about the correct option, he can assign four points to let's say option C and then zero points to the rest of the options. But if uh, the student is not completely sure, he may assign three points to this option and one option to this uh, point. Then 
uh, the team that is four or five students together should answer the same question, but this time choosing only one answer. Anyway, they told us this is one example of a question that does not promote critical thinking. Uh, once again, let's compare the former question with this question. Again, I will give you uh, a few seconds to read the, the question. Uh, you see that the question is quite more complicated first because we are asking the student to choose the finding that has the greatest implication. So in this case, the student has to imagine the situation and has to, and has to relate each one of these scenarios to a symptom or a characteristic of the Parkinson's disease. So this is an example of a question who can promote uh, critical thinking discussion, intra-team discussion, and can uh, foster uh, conversation and, and discussion within the team. <clears throat> uh, then this happened in the fourth session. Uh, we were introduced to some techniques to facilitate okay, uh, the interaction with the students after the tier rat and after the 4S activities. So as uh, I told you before, uh, in the TBL methodology, the instructor is more a guide on the side than a sage on the stage. So they gave us, uh, we spent around three hours uh, going through different uh, facil facilitation, facilitation techniques to help the students uh, interact with their peers and also with the instructor. Uh, I won't go into all these techniques uh, one by one, but this can be summarized in this uh, chart that, of course, I can share with you if you would like to have a, a look after uh, this talk. Uh, in brief, uh, we were introduced to different uh, techniques to facilitate the interaction during these uh, debriefing sessions that happen after the RAT, the readiness assurance process, and the 4S application activities. Uh, and finally, this happened in the fifth and last session. Uh, we uh, were introduced to, again, some techniques to facilitate uh, intra-team interaction and discussion and how to deal with problematic students. The instructor were aware that not all students will accept this uh, learning technique from the very first moment. So we were given some exercises, uh, practical examples on how to email a student who is having problem with their teams, how to integrate a student who doesn't uh, get along with their teammates, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, well, that's all. Uh, for my presentation. Apologies if I went, uh, I was a bit fast, but I wanted to uh, condensate as much as possible and give time for uh, the talk and the Q&A session. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I think that was just perfect timing. Okay, so we're going to open uh, the floor for questions. So yes, feel free to turn on your cameras. And Oh, okay, we have a question. John, go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Cecilia. Jesus, thank you very much for this very uh, <clears throat> structured uh, report of your uh, workshops. It, it, it looked to be very interesting. Honestly, it looked to be very interesting. And I would have one remark and two questions for you. One remark is that definitely the um, techniques that you shown just three minutes ago about the facilitation, I think would be very interesting for many of us. So maybe Cecilia, you can send after the workshop to uh, everybody. Or at least I would be interested to get, to get them. Uh, second, uh, I would have two questions for you, Jesus. The first one is um, how about the application of all what you've shown us in a hybrid configuration, meaning that having face-to-face -face teaching and remote teaching? Okay. Uh, well, I've, I'll first answer the question and then uh, 
will comment on your remark. So uh, thank you for the question. Indeed, that's a very good question uh, because I was attending those workshops online. So all the learning process happened through a platform uh, they specifically prepared for TBL. All the questionnaires, the application activities, all were in a platform called Intelli Dashboard. We were given access to that platform, but after the workshops were, were finished, we couldn't access the platform anymore. Uh, the instructors who have a longer experience with TBL were mentioning that they, in the old times, they used uh, Scantrons or these uh, scratch cards, like mm. those ones you use in the lottery. Mm. Uh, and they could get, get those cards delivered to their universities. But of course, now in a hybrid context, that could be really I am trying to picture what would happen in an in a hybrid class, and it, it could be quite difficult. I think the methodology can work well either in a in a 100% online environment or 100% face-to-face environment. Yeah. But hybrid teaching, I don't see that uh, happening. I think, of course, I'm not an expert. I just attended these workshops, but the group interaction might be difficult. That's my impression. Yeah, it make I think it makes completely sense, and that brings me. This is my second question. Do you think it would be possible to implement such kind of thing asynchronously, meaning not having the live interaction between the facilitator and the students? Mm. Let me think for a few seconds because that's also a very it's an extension of my first question. <laughs> Basically, you understand why I asked that, but the mm. trends of our classes might go to that direction. So yeah. Well, I think the T rat, the I rat and the T rat can happen mm. in an asynchronous ways. I mean, if you're using an online learning platform, I mean Moodle or mm. whatever other platform, you can set a time limit for the questioners and the students can gather together in the in the platform and answer the questions together. And maybe they can uh, write their appeals in an online form and the teacher might answer the appeals all together in a shared document or shared uh, platform. However, I think this couldn't be a substitute for the live interaction in class. The facilitation during class time seems to be uh, one of the pillars of the TBL. Mm. And trying to take this out of the methodology might be a bit problematic. That's okay. my, my, my impression. And regarding your remark, yeah, uh, let me check this. I can share with you. Can you see my screen? Yeah. This is one of the papers they shared with us. So I'm happy to share it with you. Okay, 12 tips for facilitating team-based learning. So for mm -hmm. example, they were mentioning uh, watch the clock, strategize the process of facilitation, et cetera, et cetera. That was great. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much, Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Jesus, I, is this the, the platform you were talking about? Oh, uh, wait a second. Anyways, we'll have yes. okay. Cool. Yes, that's yes. it. <laughs> okay, cool. So yeah, if anyone wants to take a look, and also we will have a longer workshop led also by Jesus in the future for John in a two-hour workshop. So then you can learn more. That would be maybe beginning of June. Or so yes, is does anyone have any other question comment? No one left. <laughs> Oh, hello, Judy. Do you have any questions? Yes? No? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> By the way, thank you for the two review. I got them ah, yesterday. Okay, cool. Yeah, nice. Uh, may, may, I, may, may I? One more? But just because it's fun because I saw Julien turning on in, in his camera. Salut, Julien. And actually, I was thinking, Julien, about what you are doing with gamification of 
uh, you are teaching, there might be sort of intersection with team uh, team based learning as well. Maybe I was thinking, don't you think so? In a sense, yeah, you have to because, um, uh, for example, during this semester, I presented in my last uh, intervention with the um, test program. I implement with a colleague in Keio University. We implement games on Steam platform because it was not. Uh, I was. I had all my classes online, and uh, it was difficult to use a board or card games uh, online. So I found an issue with the Steam video game platform, which proposed a lot of board and card games. And um, I use, for example, uh, flip learning in it to, uh, for example, to discover the rules. The student have to watch some different videos. They had also the rules on, on PDF if they want to mm -hmm. have a questionnaire. Or, but that was more, I prepare more like a, a free answer a slot, not a, not a, uh, I got this, this, this multiple, multiple choice, multiple yeah, choice question. Yeah, multiple choice question. Yeah, that's that's. I think that could be a nice idea. And I, at the beginning, we chose some game uh, which were in confrontation, in competition, and then we use also some collaboration games. And all the students really most enjoy collaboration games. That was really the night and day in their comments about the two type of games. Nice things that can join what uh, Jesse told us today with the uh, TBL, because they have to 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 play together as a team to succeed against the, uh, the IA, and that was really a nice one. And I want to continue about this thing because we can talk more with Jesse also. And I think I'm gonna participate to the to the two hour workshop if I'm available if I'm free. That could be really interesting, I think. Nice. Does anyone have any further comments or questions? It's your chance next semester is starting and <laughs> you'll have to wait two months to get the, <laughs> the workshop again. That's it. Are there other tips or uh, things to get started that you could share? Jesus? Like I could um, put on the website or share after this workshop with the participants besides the paper. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can send you links to yeah. uh, different materials. Mm -hmm. And maybe we will use for those who uh, would like to attend a workshop. So uh, I will adopt the role of a TVL instructor and all people participating will take the role of a student. So I will try to reproduce a TVL session learn, learning module in the workshop. So some of the materials I will share with you uh, will be used in that workshop. Okay, nice. Yeah, I think that's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, hey, Suze? Uh, yeah. I, I was just, I was looking through the, the web page of this uh, in, into, in, into dashboard. I'm just curious, like what, what kind of features or functions did it offer that were, I don't know, different from Zoom? Uh, well, uh, at first, this is not an online uh, conference software. We, we ah. used Zoom for the workshops. This oh, okay. platform in the dashboard is designed to host all the uh, IRAT, TRATs, and the uh, 4S application activities. Oh, okay. So for example, when you have four options and four points, you can start assigning points to each option. So if you assign, let's say three points to option B, you will uh, remain with only one point to assign to the rest of the options. Oh, I see, okay. And, <laughs> and, and of course, part of the, uh, well, they were trying to uh, advertise the platform. <laughs> so you have to pay for it. It's <laughs> But it was quite mm, nice and it's uh, user friendly. Okay, I think so. <laughs> so basically, they were using that as a learning management system. It's like a Moodle type. Uh, yeah, okay. Yes, mm. it's a learning management system. And then they show us how the instructor can uh, assign points because, of course, the whole, uh, the whole purpose of this uh, platform is to have 
also a way to uh, calculate how many points each student gets mm. by answering the either the IRAD or the TRAD, and also to register the appeals mm. to the questions if you are in doubt, uh, and then you can compile or all appeals together uh, to and uh, use and answer them during the facilitation time. I saw in the website they have a series of workshops of using TVL with their platform, so I, I would recommend that. Probably seems uh, nice. <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, wait a second. I think I have the link in here if you want to have a look. This one. Oh, nice. Yes. Oh, that's that's for the one you joined, right? The one I share is using that product, which I believe, ah. yeah, yeah, very specific. But I think, yeah, yours is it's much more broad and answering James' question, like how does this specific platform would help? Well, how was your experience? Was it easy to use? Do you see yourself? For example, you could apply for uh, GFD buying this for you <laughs> or anyone well, here. <laughs> well, I, I, I found the platform quite easy to navigate and from the uh, student's viewpoint, so yeah, I could uh, ask how much is the license <laughs> and maybe I can apply. It because I was thinking at first, maybe I can try to reproduce all these mm -hmm. platform using a combination of Google Forms and, but I think it was too complicated. <laughs> it's too complicated. Uh, yeah, it seems like it would require a lot of extra prep work for you, right? Yeah. Yeah. But the price is not included here somehow. No, I think you have to inquire about the oh. price. You have to send them a message or an email. Okay. Okay, so. I have a last question. Oh, yeah, go the, ahead. I'm, I'm not sure if you talk about this because I didn't arrive at time maybe today. But I just, I was um, reading also on the Intel dashboard website about a uh, Michaelton approach to peer evaluation. And just to know, as you told us, maybe you're gonna use this methodology during the semester for some of your classes. Do you, um, do you think you're gonna use the peer, peer by peer evaluation system? Uh, yeah, I'm planning to use it. Uh, I am planning to implement that methodology only in one instructional module of my courses this semester and see how it works. Because, well, you know, this semester is a bit of a, it's a kind of transition semester. So we will be online then we will go back in class. So I think there are too many uncertainties to start experimenting with this methodology. Maybe I'll wait until, uh, 2022 of them semester to fully implement the methodology. Also, one thing they mentioned is that it takes a lot of time to transform the syllabus into this uh, methodology. So they were uh, warning us, please, uh, if you want to uh, try this, if you want to try this, be aware that you need plenty of time. You cannot do that from uh, one week to another. Okay. Because the main shift is that you need to start thinking from uh, learning goals and then going all those levels down instead of organizing your content into one uh, week one blah 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 week two blah 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 week three blah blah blah. I will be really interested to to hear to your results about this system because I was th thinking about it in the past year also. So hmm. yeah, of course, I'll be happy to share with any of you my my materials one of the things they told us that it's really important is that before implementing the module share it with your colleagues with your peers share your mcqs share your application activities so they can tell you well i think that's a bit confusing that's uh, that's that question is perfect maybe you should change this change that thank you this is another topic, Cecilia, for an upcoming workshop, the peer-to-peer -peer assessment. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Nice yeah. idea. Yeah.
come. Oh. Okay. So we're almost finished. Uh, so if there's any more, any further questions? Anyways, yeah, as I mentioned, we have a full long workshop where, yeah, we can learn more in depth because it seems that, yeah, it requires a lot of um, knowledge, right? Um, yes. For Jesus, just have one question. Will you use these in your classes from now on or you haven't decided completely? Or you have yes. been using it in the past since you got well, the books? Well, I've used that only in a what I call a pilot module, <laughs> but uh, that I did before attending the workshops, I plan to implement this TVL methodology into my courses. But as I said, I think maybe I'll try only, uh, uh, let's say an advanced pilot module this semester. And then after we have the confirmation that we will go, we will go back to face-to-face -face classes, I will try to well implement during the whole course. Okay, so if no one has more questions, we can finish here. And thank you so much to Jesus for your very nice presentation. And uh, yes, yeah, thank, thank you everyone for joining us. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye, bye, -bye. take care. Have a nice bye -bye, day. Bye bye, everyone. Have a nice day. Thanks a lot, Jesus. Thank you.